so you need a model and you don't want to make it. Could just go find one, but that's expensive, and even if you get a free model, they're usually not great for anything in focus. Other than that, models just have no character. So how do we get a model with a story? 3D photo scanning. We can do this by using a program that I like called Meshroom. Now, there's many options for photo scanning, but I prefer Meshroom. It's an open source 3D scanning photogrammetry program that's free to anyone. This is probably a good time to mention that Meshroom won't work without an NVIDIA CUDA GPU. So if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you're gonna be a bit out of luck with Meshroom and might wanna try something else like Reality Capture or something similar. We're gonna be using a 3D technique called photo scanning or photogrammetry. This is when we take images from an object from multiple angles around feed it through a software, and we get a model spat out the other end. In order to get a good photo scan, you're gonna need a few things. First off, a camera. This can be anything from a phone all the way up to a professional DSLR. Anything you can easily take multiple images with uh, works. I'll be using my Canon T7 today, and I'd recommend this camera to anyone looking for a first camera, as they can be had for a relatively cheap second hand. Next, you're gonna need somewhere to shoot your object. I recommend somewhere open and outdoors where you'll have lots of space. And be sure to take the images when it's overcast or at the very least in the shade. I cannot stress the importance of indirect lighting for a good scan. Now, if you don't have access to a large outdoor space or maybe you don't like going outside, then a garage can be a great alternative. It's not gonna be as good as the outdoors, but it's a pretty decent substitute. Lastly, you'll need the object. You're not gonna have a very good photo scan without something to photo scan. And it can be anything so long as it's not moving. And I really mean anything. For this video, I'm gonna be scanning this little carabiner I have. It's got some exposed metal and worn edges and I wanna capture that. Not everyone will be looking to do this, but when I scan something, I really love when it's got character, you know, a story. And on top of the worn metal, I'm gonna go rough this thing around a little bit in the dirt just to get some extra detail. Now that our object is prepped, I'm going to be very careful not to disturb any dirt or dust that's stuck to it. When you're scanning, there's no real number of photos you need, but I recommend getting around 20 to 40 images each round. We'll start by scanning the midsection of our object, and then I like to shoot another round about 45 degrees above the object. Normally after the first angled round, I'd repeat the round, but looking up at the object. That won't work for all objects, like this one for example. What I'm going to do is carefully flip it over and repeat the same steps as I did before. Now, your set of images may be really nice and clean, but they're going to need some post-processing. I like to use Photoshop, but Darktable is also a great open source alternative in case you don't have access. All we're really looking to do here is get our color spectrum roughly in the middle. This is not an exact science. With our edited images, we can then save them out as JPEGs. Other formats will work too, but I find JPEGs to be the smoothest across softwares in my personal experience. In Meshroom, we can drag our images into the data pool on the left and let them load in. Once they're in, we can check for the green aperture icon in the corner, letting us know that Meshroom recognizes the image's metadata, like f-stop and lens size. I would recommend removing any images without this symbol. To keep things easy, we're just going to be using the default Meshroom setup for our skin. Go ahead and save the cache file somewhere easy and hit the green start button at the top to let Meshroom do its work. Keep in mind that this may take a while and be patient. Now that Meshroom's done, we can find the .obj in the cache textures folder and import that into a program of your choice. I'll be using Blender today. Go on and cut out the parts of the skin you don't need, maybe you fill in a few holes, and it's done. Save it as any format you like, and import your new, completely unique model into any scene or software. 